Good day, friends. It is me, HL Mod Tech, and today we're going to combine three of my favorite things. First, I've got a question from a user. Second, we're going to make it in Tinkercad. And third, we're going to upgrade it using Fusion 360. So let's get cracking. Friends, this is the Facebook group Tinkering with Tinkercad. This was a project where I was combining Tinkercad and Mesh Mixer. Today, we are going to do Tinkercad in Fusion 360, thanks to this question from Jay. Jay would like to make this paintbrush holder and have it come out with smooth curves. Kind of tricky in Tinkercad, but watch this combo project. So first, here we are in Tinkercad. We're going to call it Paintbrush Holder. I like to always name them so that way I can find them after I'm done. Then we're going to go to search and we're going to search for something called the soft box. If you type soft, it'll show up. Drag it out on to the work plane. Now, do not drag the handles. That breaks it. See how it's no longer smooth? That's trash. Always type the numbers. So the numbers we're going to use, you can make up your own. I'm going to use 60. I'm going to use 80. I'm going to make a height of 15. And I want the walls to be 3. Outer radius 6. This is the start of our tray for our paintbrushes. Now, I want to add a bottom. Watch this. Simply do Control D. And we're going to change the walls to something bigger than half of 60. So I typed 50, which is overkill. Still no big deal. It does close it. And then I want the Z to be 1.5. I'm going to make it thin so it prints fast. Select those two and do Control G to group them. Now we need to cut in the holes as I wait for that to group. We are going to cut in the holes with the whole cylinder. We can cruise this right out on the side. Now, if you've got real paint brushes, you can double check your measurements. I am just going to shift scale and I'm going to choose the number nine and press enter. I think nine millimeters is probably reasonable. Then I'm going to use the handle to push it in. You can also do control down to get it so that it cuts in. While it's on this living work plane, I'm also going to pull it down so it sinks in to about halfway. If you want to be more perfect, you can. I am not sure what one really looks like, so that's going to be fine for me. So if you cancel that work plane we were using by clicking somewhere else, don't forget you can always just add it by clicking right there. That lets it move with the arrow keys the way you'd expect. I'm close to this edge, which makes me happy. Now I'm going to do Control D, and I'm going to Shift Nudge plus a couple extra to put a gap between them. I'm going to do Control D again and again to move that across. That fits in there pretty good, but I do want to make them even, so I'm going to use this trick. Shift select, shift select, shift select to grab them all, and I'm going to group the holes. Now if I grab everything and do L for a line, they snap so they're in the middle. You can double check that height. I think I'm going to move them up one. That way it's closer to exactly even. And now that I'm happy, I'm going to do Control G to group them. Bingo! Work plane on the ground. We have just built a paintbrush tray. Once again, you'll have to know your dimensions to make a perfect paintbrush tray, but this is one with the sharp edges. And that's what it looked like with a paintbrush in it. So here comes the fun part. We're going to send it to Fusion. Send to Fusion 360. Now you do need to have Fusion installed. I am sending the selected shape. I am going to call it the paintbrush holder. I'm not doing a team project and I'm going to hit send. Now I want to open it on my desktop. Of course, I did already install Fusion 360. I did already get that license set up. Those are things you'll have to do. I have a video where I did those steps. I'll make sure it's linked in the properties. After a moment, this opens up. If we wait for a second, you'll notice that Fusion opens and bingo, that is our project. Now the first thing I want to tell you in Fusion is before you get started, Get over here and find the settings or the preferences. If you want it to feel at all normal, make sure you come down the general and switch to Tinkercad. Then your mouse moves the way you expect. I'm going to stay with free orbit. I will also reverse my zoom direction. You've got to find something that feels normal to you. So that's zooming the way I expect. I can still click on the view cube. If I hit home, it gives me a nice angle. And now we can add the cool corners. So the first thing I want to do is round this huge piece right here. So notice when I get the mouse right on it, it selects all of that edge. 
and rounding is caused by fillets, so I hit the letter F. If I type the number one and press enter, it instantly rounded that edge. How cool is that? Now it is possible to get errors when doing this. If you select too many pieces, that'll work. Also, things can be too small, but check this out, this front one, if we do F for fill it again, I'm gonna try size one and press enter. Just like that, done. Now this top one isn't done. Let's see if we can do two of these at once. I'm going to shift select and shift select. So I've got three of them. These are in my view. You can push in the scroll wheel so you can see the others. Hey, <laughs> I accidentally lost them because I wasn't holding shift. Let's just click those again. Notice I could accidentally get an edge. I only want the faces. Let's do F. And notice now it's trying to do a ton of the project. If I type one, it's probably gonna fail. Yep, this is the error. So that one I cannot do. Let's see what happens if I do point two. Still popping an error. I'm gonna just skip that. It's not worth that detail to me. These are some of the things with Fusion. When you get the errors, it's hard to figure them out sometimes. The last piece I am gonna do is this one right here. If I come inside and do F for fill it on that, this time I'm gonna type 0.5 and press enter. Bingo, it worked. Now if I do control Z, let's see if one would've worked. Nope, one gave me an error. So I had to do a smaller number to get that one, but just like that, we have rounded most of the edges on our paint tray. Let's see if I can round one of these edges real quick. I'm gonna get on that edge, F for fill it, and I'm gonna type 0.5 and press enter. Ooh, it did let me do that edge. So we would just have to do these one at a time. Let's click on edge, shift edge, shift edge, Let's see if it'll let us do both. I'll stop there and do F, 0.5. Nope, this one popped in air. Let's try 0 0.2. 0 0.2 worked. So you've just got to find your numbers and you've got to be patient going through and curving all the parts you care about. I'm going to quickly speed up the video and just shift click these till the end. Press F and type that 0.2 and enter. Now, of course, I'm all out of whack, so let's click on the home button. Let me wrap up by giving it a name. We're gonna hit file, and we're gonna hit save. It already has paintbrush holder, which is fine. I'm gonna keep it in the admin projects and save it. Now, of course, if you wanna 3D print this, you can do file export, but check this out. Here's a little bit of a hack that is faster. If you click on bodies, expand it. We've got this one body that we've created. You can right click on it, and all we have to do is choose save as a mesh. This is much more efficient. You can simply click down here on the STL. I always use a binary one. It's gonna be millimeters. And I'm gonna simply, I do need to give it a better name. This is gonna be called paintbrush tray. Everything else stays the same. And I don't wanna put it in the cloud. I wanna put it on my computer and I don't wanna put it in my downloads folder I have instead swapped to my 3D modeling folder and bam, it is ready for 3D printing. All right, friends, so that's about as fast as I can make it. Once again, this is Fusion 360. I'm gaining all my skills via cadclass.org. If you've never checked them out before, it is the ultimate online Fusion 360 school. Super efficient. There is a free preview. And as you can see, the skills gained are useful no matter where you're doing your computer-aided design. Just a quick bonus, friends, I do want to show you. If you switch to all courses, there is a Tinkercad in 20 Days course that I am helping create. It is almost ready to be unveiled. I just want to let you know that it's out here. Of course, it has a free preview as well. Finally, friends, I just want to show you I imported the new one into Tinkercad. You can see how much nicer it looks. You can see how much nicer it looks with those smooth corners. I'm going to give it a different color just because I think that looks a little more cool. And of course, I want to thank Jay for asking about the project. Friends, as I wrap up this video, I would like to remind you about my website, hlmodtech.com. As we know, there is a page dedicated to Tinkercad, tons of amazing categories. And then below that, 
You'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tanker Cat Essentials. Finally, in the bottom corner, you will find a sweet built-in messaging tool. You can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. I do also want to highlight up above the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Of course, friends, you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you'll be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.